Hi friends, I'm Father Kerry Walters, pastor of Holy Spirit American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. You may remember the word truthiness. It was coined about 10 years ago by comedian Stephen Colbert to designate a belief that we hold not on the basis of any evidence or rational thought, but simply on gut instinct. Colbert was concerned about collapsing the distinction between truth and truthiness, and so am I today. The political climate that has fallen upon our nation seems to be whittling away at the distinction between the two. There are charges and countercharges flying back and forth about false facts, fake news, alternative facts, and it can be bewildering to such an extent that we may despair of ways to distinguish between truth and falsity. But I don't think we should despair because there are clear standards that we can invoke depending upon the kind of inquiry we're making. So, for example, suppose we really do want to find out if a factual claim is true. Well, we might invoke at that point what's called the correspondence theory of truth, in which we test the claim to see if it actually does correspond or match up with the state of affairs that it pretends to be describing. Or suppose we're examining a large body of knowledge, an entire argument, or a hypothesis, or a theory. One way to test it for truth is to see if its claims are consistent with one another, if there is an internal coherence to the claims. That's known as the coherence theory of truth. Or suppose we have a claim that, we, that promises to accomplish something in the real world if carried out. We can test that claim according to its actual effectiveness. This can be called the pragmatic theory of truth. Now, these three standards of truth are not mutually exclusive. They apply in different circumstances, different kinds of inquiry, and they're very useful from separating truthiness from truth. In the New Testament, the word that is commonly translated as truth is the Greek word aletheia. Frequently, in both the Gospels and in St. Paul, it carries similar meanings to the correspondence theory of truth, the coherence theory of truth, and the pragmatic theory of truth. So sometimes, for example, aletheia means honesty. At other times, it means trustworthiness. At other times, it simply means fact or factual. But it also introduces us to a new kind of truth, a truth that's especially important to people of faith. The word aletheia literally means an unconcealing, an unveiling, a revealing. So when we experience aletheia, something is revealed to us, which our reason or imagination or senses alone can't tell us about. It's very telling that in John's Gospel, Jesus refers to him at one to himself at one point as aletheia. I am the truth, Jesus says. What he seems to be suggesting is that in his person, God is unveiled to the rest of us. God is unconcealed to the rest of us. It is a gracious giving forth that Jesus offers us, a giving forth of the divine. This is a kind of truth experience that changes life. And the reason it does that is because it gives us a glimpse of that which is absolutely real, absolutely solid, eternal, unchanging. It changes lives when we experience this kind of truth. If we experience a factual truth, it puts some more information in our pocket. And that's important, but it need not change our life and certainly won't change our life in the way that an experience of aletheia as unconcealing does. Or if we test a hypothesis and discover that all of its claims in fact are consistent with one another, that gives us more information. Or if we discover that in point of fact a statement does have concrete pragmatic effectiveness in the world, that likewise gives us information and enables us to perform certain actions. But again, none of them have quite the weight that an alethic experience of reality, an unveiling or an uncovering of reality, does. When we experience truth as aletheia, 
we are immediately suffused with an awareness that the cosmos is greater than we have ever imagined or can imagine. But we are also suffused with the awareness that the cosmos is benevolent, that there exists behind the cosmos a God who embraces and loves us, that God loses none of his majesty or loses none of the awe-inspiring mystery, but does come a bit closer to us in the unveiling that, that God allows us. So my friends, don't be di discouraged in this day and age of political rancor in which claims and counterclaims about what is true and what is false are flying back and forth. There are ways to test factual claims, there are ways to test coherency claims, and there are ways to test pragmatic or practical claims. But never lose sight of the fact that in addition to these different sets of truth, there is a truth that is revelatory and which for we Christians is more important than all other instances or examples of truth. And it's truth as a lethic revealing of pure reality. And of course, that pure reality is God, God's self. I'm Father Kerry Walters, and this has been another Holy Spirit moment. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.